Awesome. So, um, like I said, I'm Kenny Peoples, a uh, evan evangelist on the integration products. And we're going to go through uh, Red Hat JBoss Fuse on OpenShift, uh, do a little demo, and um, hit me up uh, with any questions or give me any feedback so that we can um, improve upon um, the presentation and, and demos. So, uh, as I said, I'm an evangelist for the integration products. Uh, previously, I, I was a Red Hat consultant for Department of Defense and Intelligence Community. Um, I blog at OSSmentor.com, and um, my uh, Twitter is at OSSmentor. Um, and I was just putting some upcoming um, events on there uh, for some meetups and out on jboss.org. Um, we'll start putting more um, of our schedule out there for evangelists. So um, if we happen to be in the area, um, because we do uh, travel globally uh, to the different regions, um, that you'll be able to look at the calendar um, and attend uh, events. So the session overview. Uh, so uh, let, me, let me just one second here. Um, make sure that um, I cover uh, everything that I wanted to cover while we're going through here. So um, in our session today, of course, we're going to cover um, OpenShift uh, with Red Hat JBoss View 6.1. So uh, I am going to uh, describe OpenShift, some, few, some, go through a demo, and then uh, if we have time, we'll do some Q&A. So OpenShift Online is, of course, Red Hat's public cloud application development and hosting platform, uh, which automates the provisioning, management, and scaling of applications. Um, so, of course, you can um, focus on writing the, the code uh, for the business, um, or a next big idea. Um, so the key benefits of OpenShift are the speed, the choice, the open source, and the ease of use. And uh, Fuse is the full-featured, easy-to-use, and intuitive framework for integration with extensive connectivity options to external applications. So in this session, uh, we'll learn how to install the Fuse cartridge sorry, cartridge, how to access and use the management console and how to um, pull and test one of the, or two of the bundles. And so um, with this session, um, some of it may be uh, basic for you, some of it uh, may not, but um, bear with me. And then um, if you have any feedback on um, whether we need to include more hands-on and less of the overview, uh, then just let me know. So the agenda, the OpenShift overview, the Fuse overview, excuse me, installing the Fuse cartridge, accessing and using the management console, and deploying and testing a Fuse application. So what is OpenShift? Um, I won't make assumptions and assume that everybody um, in the session or attending this event knows uh, everything about OpenShift. So we're gonna go through that a little bit and the same for Fuse. We're gonna hit a quick overview of Fuse. Um, I wanna make sure that, um, um, that the audience, if there's uh, newbies for OpenShift and Fuse, that we hit a little bit of the overview first. Um, so uh, if you're more of an advanced user, uh, then just bear with me. So um, sure. So as I mentioned, um, the OpenShift is uh, Red Hat's platform as a service or PaaS uh, that gives us that quick development, hosting, and scaling of applications in a cloud. And of course, OpenShift has three offerings, has the uh, online, on-premise, and open source paths. Uh, so uh, they are OpenShift Online, OpenShift Enterprise, and OpenShift Origin. 
And OpenShift, of course, is the um, PaaS layer. So, um, go back here. Yeah. So, uh, we're going to use OpenShift online when we do some of the uh, demo. And um, so, the PaaS facilitates the uh, deployment of applications or services within the cost and complexity of buying and managing the underlying hardware and software and provisioning hosting capabilities. So why platform as a service? Of course, fast development by starting quickly and iterating quickly. And as I indicated, the PaaS manages the cloud and app stack. Uh, and this saves time and allows the focus to remain on the code and the customers. So um, code, deploy, and enjoy. So you code your app, push button, deploy, your app is running in the cloud, save time and money. So I really like this slide because it gives a good representation of what you're trying to do with OpenShift. So on the left-hand side, of course, you have uh, well, the, the two in the middle there, the craft work um, with physical and virtualized, and then the assembly line over on the right. So building an app with the physical or the bare metal um, requires the building and acquiring of hardware and OS software, installing patches, fixes, creating accounts, um, deploy the framework app server, the testing tools, order more servers to meet the demand, and then, of course, on the virtualized, you don't have as many options, but you, or you don't have as many tasks, but you still have a large number of tasks there. So the virtualized option reduces the need to install the hardware and OS by requesting a VM, but the deploy of the framework and app server must be done. So then on the right, the assembly line with the platform as a service um, but the need for deploying the framework, app server, test tools, uh, those are reduced. And so with the assembly line option, you code, test, launch, um, and that automatically scales. So the steps are reduced significantly. And as a quote on the bottom uh, indicates, using a PaaS enables uh, a more agile and more uh, ability to be more responsive to the business needs. Ah, so how do I use it? So um, to take advantage of the power and elasticity of the cloud, you really follow three general steps. You create an application in one of these uh, ways, the web console, the command, uh, line tools or through JBDS. Uh, second, you code the application or use one of the quick starts. And then third, you push the application code to OpenShift online. So uh, more specifically, you follow the, the list that's shown here. Create an account, install the client tools, choose a namespace, create an application, choose a language, choose a name, add the cartridges, and push the code with git. So we're going to discuss a couple of concepts here, um, and hopefully that'll give you uh, more depth of knowledge on um, OpenShift. So the foundation of OpenShift, of course, is RHEL. And so OpenShift is built on instances of RHEL, the Red Hat Enterprise Linux. And so OpenShift provides um, disk space, CPU, resources, memory, network, connectivity, and app server. So the main um, units, units there um, are the broker and the node. And so communication between the broker and nodes are done through uh, the message queuing service. Yeah, I need to go to the next one. 
sorry about that. So uh, here, uh, we just wanted to say the foundation of OpenShift is Red Hat Enterprise Linux. So then going into an OpenShift broker manages multiple nodes, OpenShift nodes. The nodes are where user applications live, brokers keep OpenShift running. Um, so as I was saying, um, the two main functional units are the broker and the node, and communication between those are done through message queuing service. And the uh, broker is a single point of contact for uh, application management activities that's responsible for managing the user logins, the DNS, application state, etc. cetera. And customers, customers don't have to contact the broker directly. Instead, they use the web console, CLI tools, um, the IDE, and the node servers host the built-in cartridges uh, that will be made available to the users and the gears um, where the user applications will actually be stored and served. So here, uh, with one of the powerful capabilities of OpenShift is the use of security enhanced Linux. Uh, where SE Linux policies um, securely subdivide the node instances, and that enables the security and multi-tenancy. So then next we have the uh, OpenShift user applications run in the OpenShift gears. So the OpenShift gears represent secure containers in RHEL. And the gears represents the slice of the node CPU, RAM, and storage that is made available to each application. And an application can never use more than the resources that uh, is allocated in the gear. And the multiple gear configurations are available at application setup time. So uh, the uh, gears combine the partitioning capabilities of uh, control groups with the security features of SE Linux. So when the developer creates an application using the web console, the IDE or command line, then OpenShift creates a gear. Um, and that's what's um, being shown here. A developer creates a new application, um, OpenShift creates a gear. So cartridges, um, and we'll go more into the fuse cartridge shortly, but um, the concept of the cartridges, the uh, configuration of gears are done via the uh, cartridges, and the car cartridges are how OpenShift installs the languages and middleware. So the cartridges re represent pluggable components that can be combined within a single application. Um, at minimum, the application needs a language or an environment cartridge. Um, examples, PHP, EAP. And most applications need a uh, database cartridge. So um, with OpenShift, very powerful with the capability to um, allow user-built cartridges. So developers can add custom language data store or middleware uh, with a custom cartridge. Uh, and of course, OpenShift has the default cartridges, which are listed there, uh, Java, PHP, Python, Ruby, MySQL, Postgres, and so forth. So um, when you go into uh, the management console or you go into the IDE or you go in through a uh, command line, you can list those cartridges that are already uh, um, built, uh, which are the default cartridges. Yeah, so that's all I wanted to say there. So now you can uh, code and push. So a developer pushes that application code via Git source code management system. 
And you'll notice here this example, uh, the uh, push with the um, code to the Git repo with JBoss and MySQL. And OpenShift automates the build test publish. And uh, this is showing an example of uh, Maven for the builds, Jenkins for continuous integration. So the um, OpenShift application scaling that can be done automatically. Um, if you'll notice uh, here, it has the HA proxy cartridge that's put into a gear. So the application scaling enables the application to react to changes in traffic and automatically allocates the necessary resources to handle the current demand. Um, you specify whether the application is scaled or not when you create it. So um, there are options to, um, when you create the application, to add whether it's scaled or not. Um, and so currently, um, I believe this is um, uh, currently true, you can't uh, go back and forth with an application between scaled and non-scaled. When you create it, you have to set it and it has to stay at that setting um, at that time, um, or it has to stay at that setting for that application. Um, you can't go back and forth between the two. So if you create a non-scaled application, uh, the web occupies only a single gear and all traffic is sent to the gear. Additional cartridges share that gear. But when you have scaled applications created, the HA proxy that's shown here, uh, that cartridge is loaded um, to the first in the first web gear. And then any other uh, cartridges like MySQL would be added in a new gear. So um, this is a good slide showing how developers can choose uh, how they want to work with OpenShift. Um, if you do the command line tooling and you have to uh, add the, the client tools into your environment, you're doing the developer ID integrations. Um, you can use uh, JBoss Developer Studio, uh, which is based on Eclipse, of course. Then we have the web browser console um, for um, the management console. And so you can work with the applications um, uh, and uh, modify the configuration and so forth. So here we have also the REST APIs uh, that developers can work with as well. All right, so I'm real excited about this. I, I like who, what the OpenShift team has done with um, the XPaaS services page, and you're going to hear more about XPaaS in the future. But right now, out on the XPaaS services page, um, it has the different services, um, the application container services for EAP, the integration services for Fuse and data virtualization, um, and of course, we're going to concentrate on Fuse. And it has the business process services um, and the mobile services. So you can go to that page. Um, you can actually uh, do the deployment um, from there. Has getting started. Has some videos um, and additional information there. So just quick note: a couple of things on Fuse and AMQ. Uh, of course, with Fuse and AMQ 6.1, 150 plus connectors, um, has AMQ P 1.0 support, the unified management console, uh, the integration in the cloud. Uh, keep in mind this is an OpenShift uh, cartridge that is preview only, and then improved HA with level DB uh, that's preview only as well. 
So just a quick note, um, like I said, uh, Christina and I uh, work on the integration product line, and that's comprised of um, actually four products when you include data virtualization. Um, but a lot of people ask, uh, are these duplicated products? And the answer there uh, would be no, because um, you have uh, uh, different use cases, different um, reasons for using the different products, and um, it's going to depend on customer need. And also, um, as you uh, progress through AMQ Diffuse Diffuse Service Works, you're adding capability on each of those products. Um, so there is a reason for having um, the added capabilities as you're moving through the different products. So of course, AMQ or messaging um, for the message bus, um, integrate applications, devices by notification, or exchange of data using the multiple protocols in any runtime. Uh, then with our Fuse product, of course, we have the Fuse ESB and includes uh, messaging, the AMQ. So uh, we mediate, transform, route, and connect between um, the loosely coupled components and services using EIP, the enterprise integration patterns. Then with Fuse ServiceWorks, um, you have uh, the Fuse ESB, you have the messaging uh, based on AMQ, um, and Few Service Works also has the service governance, the service orchestration, um, and the structured service development. So that's our service and integration platform. They develop and choreograph services, manage lifecycle, define and enforce service policy, and uh, monitor service activity. So, um, with the Red Hat JBoss Views ESB cartridge, um, what I'm going to show you today, um, I'm going to walk through a couple of uh, uh, samples um, with the quick start setter included. And I've included a couple of videos that you can watch um, at a later time. And um, we'll go through those in just a minute. Um, but the uh, JBoss Fuse on OpenShift is available as the developer preview only um, to allow you to explore the capabilities of Apache ActiveMQ uh, messaging and Apache Camel integration uh, framework running um, on OpenShift, and in our case, OpenShift Online. So the preview is based on the JBoss View 6.1 supported release. But keep in mind that preview doesn't mean it's guaranteed support. Um, so it is only a tech preview. And so uh, what's nice about this is the configurations um, can be changed um, with JBoss Views. Um, you can alter those configurations. Uh, while your connections are running um, and deploy or update the services um, easily while JBoss Fuse is running. So one of the things that I wanted to cover um, on the XPaaS page that I showed you, uh, there's some frequently asked questions. So I would uh, go out and, and look at that. Um, so the first question, there are several questions on that page, but there are two that I really wanted to point out here that are kind of gotchas uh, that you may run into. So um, JBoss Fuse, I'm sorry, I'm gonna start over. So what does it mean when I uh, mention that it's uh, preview, on, preview only? Um, that's really meaning that it's an alpha cartridge at this point. So JBoss Fuse on OpenShift, it is based on the pre-release version of JBoss Fuse 6.1. And like any pre-release software, 
is continually um, undergoing testing and improvements. So um, one of the reasons that um, you have to be careful when you're going in um, and trying to show all views on OpenShift online is uh, things do uh, get changed um, constantly. And if you're using the cartridge that's noted uh, when you add the application um, and you use the cartridge that's noted on the site, well, if somebody's making a change with that cartridge and there's an issue, um, then it can cause problems for you. And um, I learned that firsthand um, at Summit because right when I was trying to show something there, the cartridge was actually in flux and changing. Um, and so uh, there were issues and errors um, at that point. Um, and so what will performance be like in a small gear? So I would recommend that uh, you don't run a small gear. Um, I think it, I'm pretty sure it lets you use a small gear. I haven't actually tried that, honestly. Um, with what I have on my OpenShift account, I try and target a large gear uh, for what I'm doing. Um, just because uh, when you go down to medium gear, um, it does uh, uh, ha it does have reduced performance. So as it says here, what will the performance be like in a small gear? So if you choose to run Fuse in a small gear, you're going to experience a slower performance um, as tasks take a little bit longer to complete. And I noticed when I was testing earlier today that even the large gear uh, uh, did not have great performance. So um, when you create a new container, for instance, that indicates here, uh, that process may take one or two minutes rather than create uh, in a matter of seconds if you're using a small gear. I've noticed that even when you're using a medium gear, that's kind of questionable there. Um, so using a large gear would be uh, would be best. So I wanted to do a shout out to a couple of things here. Um, the first, there's a book um, that's available for free. It's a free download. And um, it's getting started with a OpenShift, a guide for impatient beginners. Um, so it's a good book. Um, and uh, if you're uh, new to OpenShift, then I would suggest trying to go download it and go through uh, some of the examples. And I know they're going to be adding um, to that. And um, so it's pretty good information. Now I wanted to give another shout out to Eric Chabelle, who is a um, technology evangelist, just like Christina and myself. And uh, this is Eric's second revision. So this is revision two. Um, and I've got, there's a small cost associated, but it is worth it because um, there's a uh, quick starts, how to's, and some examples uh, there that you can download and try. So um, what I wanted to do uh, now over the next um, probably 10 minutes, uh, do about 10 minutes um, going through some on OpenShift, then go into uh, questions um, and have a discussion on views on OpenShift. So the first demonstration I want to do is just showing you uh, when you add the views cartridge, um, you can add the sample SOAP web service um, and do some testing. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, so it enables you to do a quick test. And then, of course, um, that installs that bundle. And you can install a bundle as well to do your own testing. Second demonstration is the REST service that's included. So I included the two uh, links to GitHub for those two quick starts that are included with um, Fuse. So whether you're running Fuse locally or whether you're uh, running Fuse cartridge on OpenShift, 
um, you can test out both of those web services. Now, I I was going to go through the loan broker demonstration, um, but I had a um, talk with Christina a little bit, and I, I'm in agreement that um, some of these uh, examples, like loan broker, and I have references at the end. There's videos out there, and there's been a lot of um, um, uh, marketing of those and those are really good examples so I don't want to reinvent the wheel there we want to try and add some new demos and get some uh, uh, new collateral and material for you so this demonstration three I included the video so afterwards um, and we may have a couple of minutes left before the next session uh, where you can go and try out uh, the loan broker um, demo um, by going to that link and watching the, the video. And then uh, the last one there, um, this was something that was recent that Christina did a uh, real good demo on views on OpenShift with MQTT. So um, big shout out to her for um, um, getting the two-part blog done, two-part article done. Um, so you can also go give that a try afterwards as well. So uh, just real quickly before I um, run through showing you some of this, um, very simple to uh, get the SOAP and REST service running. So you can just do some testing um, and go through the management console. And keep in mind, the management console on OpenShift, the uh, unified management console for Fuse, um, since it's based on Fuse 6.1, it's going to be the same thing as your local Fuse install. So what you've done with Fuse and the management console locally should be able to do out on um, Fuse on OpenShift. So uh, just real quickly, um, and this should go pretty quick to, to do, um, with the exception, let me take that back, with the exception of what gear you choose um, and how quickly um, things are installed. Uh, I've already installed things because I want to at least be able to show you uh, what's happening instead of trying to install cartridges and something happening um, on the install. But we may um, go through some of that um, Anyway, um, so uh, I included the steps here that we're going to run through uh, so you can reference these later. Step one, create an application which will contain the management console. Step two, um, add the SOAP and REST quick starts um, within the application profile or create new containers with the quick start. So that's what I did just to, to have them separated to show. Um, I created a soap container and a rest container, which you can do it however you want. Uh, and you can click on the API list to see those rest and soap endpoints. So then I'll show you how to open the containers to step four to see the log and the uh, uh, deployments um, for the bundles. And step five, send a soap message uh, and look at the log and I have a SOAP UI within uh, JBoss Developer Studio that I'm using. And then step six, send a REST message uh, and look at the log. Uh, and I'm using the Chrome plugin. I have a Chrome plugin that works well with REST. Um, so we're going to go through that. So um, this is a reference slide. And I included this so that um, you have some additional videos and documentation uh, that you can go take a look at. Um, there's a couple there that I want to point out. Uh, Christian Posta uh, did several there. Um, I think that was part one through part six there um, uh, that he did. That was uh, based on that loan broker um, example. Um, and then we have um, the JBoss views on OpenShift and how to connect to Twitter. So that's a good one as well. 
um, so that you can go try later on. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I want to show you uh, some of what's going on with Fuse and OpenShift. Let's see if there are any questions. Uh, let's go back here. Okay, someone does say it does allow running on a small gear. Um, so that's good to know. Um, I haven't. Um, it's uh, Varun, I believe. So I haven't tried running that on a small gear, um, but it uh, should be possible. Um, it's just a performance impact that you'll have to be aware of. Um, Chrome Advanced REST Client, if anyone is keen. Uh, let me think. I, that's the one that I'm using here, and I really like that a lot as well um, because uh, you can save projects um, and so forth. So. Um, Thanks, and hopefully I'm pronouncing your name properly, properly uh, Naveen. Um, so thanks uh, there. So let's um, let me pull this over. Let's go through uh, a couple of things here. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I did that right. Um, so let's, let's see here. Yeah. So I already have uh, our HC. Um, the client tools installed. So I'm going to go through a couple of quick things with the management console. Um, but what we're going to do in the management console, um, as far as the application creation, uh, you can do that uh, within the uh, command line tools. And of course, there are other options there. So if I look at um, my applications, oops, of course I have to be able to type the right command. Nobody saw that, did they? Oh, wait. Is that a little bit better to be able to see? Hopefully it is. Um, awesome. So um, let's do that again. So I've already installed those command line tools. And let's see. Yeah, there you go. So um, you can see the different options there. Um, what I wanted to show is there's the list of cartridges. Now, um, One of the things, whoops. <laughs> Missed the password entry. Um, okay, so um, with the uh, cartridges, um, you'll notice that uh, if Fuse is not there, um, and I believe that once it gets to the production state, then it will be included in the, um, uh, when it's supported, it'll be included in the list of cartridges. So um, one of the things that I wanted to show is this is the, should be the apps that I already have uh, installed. And we're gonna go through those real quick. Let's come over here. So, of course, we're dealing with OpenShift Online. Um, real easy to get started and use. Um, so, like I said, you would want to make sure um, that you've created an, an account. Um, and uh, you do have the free service with, um, I believe it's three years. Um, and if you're a Red Hat employee, you can apply to um, get more gears. You can hit me up offline if uh, you want a link on how you can do that. Um, 
I have uh, 16. And so once we uh, have our account, we log in. And you'll notice I have the um, applications here um, that I've created. So let's go to RHTE Fuse to, whoop, let me start back over. I'm not gonna create one right this second, but if I do add application, um, you see the integration, uh, the, the JBoss Fuse 6.1. So if I click on that, uh, it has application name, um, our gear selection. Um, and if you'll notice, it already has the, the cartridge there for the manifest. Um, and then we can create that application. But what I've done to save time here, uh, let's go back to applications. I created uh, RHPE Fuse Test um, dash OSS mentor. So let's click on there, and that should take us to the Unified Management Console, Paul Tayo. And so when we look at runtime here, um, the RHTE Fuse test uh, is our unified contains our Unified Management Console. So if I go to um, that container, I can click on Add. And if you'll notice in my example quick starts there, I can add the rest or soap service. So you can do that here. But what I did um, under the containers here is I did a create and um, I created a soap container and I just chose um, my uh, soap profile here. Then I created a REST one, which created that container um, and added the REST profile. Um, it should start as a uh, fabric. If you'll look up top um, at the um, perspective, Uh, right now, it's a fabric perspective. And you can also go uh, to the container uh, perspective. And so what we're going to do um, is um, we're going to go within the, uh, let's go to the soap container first. So if you'll notice um, uh, the little icon there, you can open a new window and connect, connect to this container. And when I do that, it's pulling up the log. Uh, so let's um, go over to OSGI and let's look at our bundles. And if you'll notice, I already have my um, um, SOAP Quick Start uh, bundle installed. Um, and so uh, we can go back over to logs. And I can go back here to JBoss Developer Studio. And if you notice, I went ahead and used the whistle. I'll show you how to look at uh, where the uh, um, whistle URL is. Um, but if you notice, I have my request here. Uh, Red Hat, OpenShift, and Fuse are awesome. And uh, if I click on Go, then it should come back with my um, response. And then if we go look at the log, and we scroll down and we look here, then um, here's the inbound message. And if I look at the uh, next entry in the log, I can see um, the outbound message. And so let's go back to the uh, container here. I'm sorry, uh, the management console. And if you'll notice at the top, of course, we're on the containers page. If we go up to APIs, uh, then it's showing our two services. Um, our APIs are Waddle and our WSDL, and shows the container they're in and their uh, 
location here. And then of course you can click on say the WSDL and um, I can go down into uh, say hi, um, the operation, and I can look at the raw form of the WSDL. So then let's go back um, over the containers, management console, we'll close this one here. Let's click on rest, look at that container. Oops, all right out. So I'm not gonna go into all the management console options. What I wanted to do uh, was just show you how you could quickly uh, run SOAP and REST quick starts, um, give you the option of uh, looking at um, the other demos with those links um, um, and uh, answer any questions. So um, as you can see, uh, the different options here for the uh, container and that it contains the uh, the REST associated profile. So let's come up here to connect to the container and let's go over to OSGI. And so within here, you can also do the um, stop, start, refresh, update, uninstall, install, so forth. So, uh, Let's go back here. And if you'll notice, here's our uh, bundle for our REST quick start. So let's go back over to logs. Excuse me. And uh, let's go to um, the advanced REST client app. And I have um, a project, Fuse REST. Uh, and I'm using the Fuse REST test customer. So let's let's first choose that one, and let's send that message. And it returns the uh, response with that uh, customer information for that ID. So then let's go look at our um, log, and we have the invoking, um, and then um, we have the outbound message. So let's come back over here and let's just change it to another. We're gonna test the orders real quick. And so uh, we just sent the, um, um, order number here and you see the response and um, we'll look at the log. I have the in invoking um, with the order ID of 223 and the uh, response here. So let's close that. And of course, you can look at the health of the containers um, for each one of the containers. We can manage a, a new dashboard here, but um, the main things would be the uh, health, the uh, logs, and of course, OSGI. Um, and uh, I believe James did um, a couple of videos uh, on the um, management console, as well as some on Fabric. So let's go back here. Yeah, hopefully um, I said that. Thanks, Christina. So uh, Varun said, does the fuse cartridge start as a um, standalone or as a fabric? And hopefully I answered that properly a, a minute ago. Um, it has a management console and uh, starts as fabric, and um, it has the fabric perspective um, in the management console and Christina uh, responded, it starts as fabric. So um, hopefully I answered that properly a minute ago. Um, so uh, thanks Christina and uh, thanks for, um, uh, and please, if anybody else has any additional questions, um, 
please post them in the uh, chat and I'll uh, answer them. And of course, if you don't know the answer right off, we'll find the answer. Um, so uh, let me make sure that I got through everything there. Let me see what time it is. Yeah, so we're getting down to the time. So um, that was kind of why I didn't want to go into the other uh, demos because I didn't want to get uh, um, behind um, where we couldn't finish. So um, what I wanted to do here, let's see. Let's see real quick. So again, there was the steps, um, very quick steps that you can try. There's the additional demos um, here. Um, both of those are in the slide deck. You can access that through speaker deck. So let me come back over to question. So, can you provide any guidance as to when we'll see similar management console capabilities for few service works? And uh, that was from Simon uh, Varun uh, answers. I think few service works is essentially running on EAP, so the console is that of EAP. So uh, uh, Varun is um, correct there, where few service works. Um, um, there's the plugin and the management console um, on EAP for few service works. As far as um, extending that and adding more to it, um, using any of the other uh, consoles, uh, I think that's yet to be uh, determined. Um, and if you would like me to find out more information about that, because um, I wanted to get a status update on that, uh, you can send me an email and um, I can have a discussion with um, Samir and Alan uh, to see what the latest is on that as far as um, the uh, future on that. So a related question, will Halt IO become a standard console for EAP few service works in the future? So that's a very good question. And so, um, so um, I, I instead of instead of responding with um, what I had heard recently, um, I'd rather uh, talk to Samir and Alan about the. Um, standard console for EAP and few service works and then send that out to you. So um, if you'll send me an email, um, I can respond on that. And let's see, what time is it? Uh, thank you. And so it's 12.58. Um, it's midnight here. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead and um, in the session and um, thanks everybody for joining and I appreciate it. I appreciate you attending. Hopefully um, you found it valuable and if you see any issues or you think it should be um, done differently, uh, please send me an email or give me feedback. Send Christina an email um, so that when we do these in the future, uh, we can adjust it so everyone is getting uh, the most out of the session, whether it's more overview, less overview, more hands-on or uh, custom examples, um, please give us that uh, feedback. And uh, thanks everybody so much for joining. And I'll go ahead and uh, stop at this point.